Hi, I'm Chris, ZL3 Lima Foxtrot, and this is my build video for the T1. When I was looking at the T1, I didn't find any English language uh, videos about it that showed much detail, and I didn't find a build video, and I'd found some of the uh, the other Alacraft build videos quite interesting on YouTube, so I thought I'd create one for the T1. So here we are doing the box opening, and I'm talking over the box opening, because quite frankly, well, box openings are really, really boring. There's some nice uh, manuals come with the T1 though, and the construction manual is excellent. I've never built an Alacraft kit before, this was my first one. Quite impressed with the quality of the manual, and you can um, download them from the website and have a read before you build the kit as well. So uh, that's quite handy, and here I am uh, once again reading the manual. Also in the box is some uh, some nice sealed uh, baggies of goods, there's the, uh, the case and all the electronics governs. Um, governs being a technical term and circuit board there and uh, everything was apparently checked by Stephanie so thank you Stephanie for, uh, for sorting that cutting to the chase just uh, empty everything out of the bag into the uh, into the box and start sorting it against the inventory <coughs> so there's a nice inventory list in the uh, in the manual and uh, I did a quick check through that also notice there's some SMD capacitors already mounted on the board, which is quite handy. Um, makes the kit smaller, of course, and uh, no one wants to try and solder those suckers in by hand. Particularly when you're using an old, uh, well, a soldering iron like I am. Yeah. <laughs> quite a vintage soldering iron, it's had a lot of use, this one. But it makes a satisfying click when you turn it on. Just top up all the sponge there. So the first step was to connect the uh, BNC connectors. And I noticed in the manual it said you might want to use a much uh, larger iron than a, a temperature controlled one. I found my weller did the job fine. I did have to uh, to hold it on for a while. It's a 60 watt element in the weller. My larger iron is a um, 240 watt uh, bolt. <laughs> yeah, it's not literally a bolt, but it might as well be. And I was a bit concerned I might damage the circuit board using that, so I went with the um, the cooler iron. It did take a wee while to uh, tin, as you can see here. But um, it did turn fine, and um, the quality of the joints was uh, was okay once it finished. Just took a wee while to heat up, because you've got to heat up the whole barrel of the connector really to get that uh, post on the BNC connector to tin. You can see it tins right about right about there we go. Finally uh, got hot enough, so tick in the box for that, and we moved on to the next step. The uh, the first discrete to go in was these uh, 51 ohm were they 51 ohm resistors I think they were 50 ohm haven't got the manual in front of me and this was the only component that didn't fit perfectly um, all the rest of the components had no trouble fitting to the board as you can see there this one was slightly uh, slightly oversized for the whole spacing unless I had have bent the leads uh, much more aggressively and didn't want to bust it so. There's a bit of discrete componentry installed. I didn't video every step. Um, I didn't think that was necessary. Uh, this was the one cap that was substituted. Um, there was a 1kV rated cap instead of the 500 volt in the, in, in the uh, instructions. No big deal with that substitution, of course. The next step was uh, putting the relays in. So you poke all the relays in the board. And that takes a wee while. There's 15 of them. And six pins per relay. That's uh, quite a few pins. <laughs> I should be able to do that maths in my head, but uh, I've just been recording this video, so my brain's not functioning properly. Anyway, you stick in all of the uh, the relays first, flip it over with a piece of card or something there, and uh, solder one pin, make sure they're all lined up, and then uh, finish the process. And apologies to Oscar November 3 Alpha November Yankee, that was your QSL card. Um, that will actually be in the, uh, in the, borough, in the Bureau mail fairly soon. So once you've um, soldered one pin and checked they're all lined up, you've finished the job by soldering everything. Next was the IC socket, and Alacraft specified that you put in the wee connectors at either end, P1 and P2, to line up the IC socket uh, before you solder it in. I assume that's because a few people get it wrong. <laughs> in with the stereo socket, uh, the uh, the wee mini din, uh, mini uh, stereo socket that's used for the remote control, which I didn't purchase, and... Uh, Next is the, the connectors for the controller board, and interesting to note, later on in the manual it says that the plastic body of the two connectors for the controller board should mate up uh, together. Uh, mine didn't, I couldn't uh, get them to mate, you'd have to force them fairly hard, which would uh, break them. So uh, there was a gap between the plastic bodies, and you'll see that when you read the manual, uh, what I mean by that comment. So 
soldered a couple of pins, then put some pressure on the board to seat everything down, remounted the solder, and then finished the job by soldering the rest of the pins. A fair way along in the construction with this uh, this project at this stage. It's going really well. Nice kit. A couple of caps on the back of the board, and that's one of the um, 10 picker farad 1kV caps. Next step was a resistance check. So here in the manual it specifies to measure the resistance from some pins on the IC uh, to earth and um, across the rail. Nice step and a nice inclusion in the manual. So um, tick boxes there to make sure you got things right. Let's you do a basic circuit check. Next step was winding uh, T1 which is the first of the toroids and I note Allocraft provide the option of purchasing the toroids or the inductors are pre-wound. I opted not to do that. Um, I'm sure some people don't find this process all that uh, pleasurable. Well, they are quite fiddly and I've, uh, I've got big fingers as you can see compared to the size of the, size of the toroid. So T1 is a, um, a 1 to 8 transformer. So there's 8 turns on the secondary which is the toroid and a 1 turn formed by a piece of wire which runs through the, uh, through the centre which you'll see in a photo just in a tick. So after you've thread the uh, eight turns through, eight times through the middle, um, you even them up and uh, you've got yourself a wee toroid. Next step is to tin the wire. Now the, um, the enamel on the wire melts at a lower temperature than the solder and the manual suggests um, the easy, what I think is the easiest method which is just to uh, run a blob of solder on your iron uh, down the wire which uh, once it's hot enough melts all of the enamel off and you can see there it's just uh, turning the wire. Just have to be careful not to burn your finger. I'm uh, fairly sure I didn't burn my finger but that was fairly close in the scheme of things. So once you've done that you've got a nice wee uh, secondary for T1 and you can see I've tinned the, the leads there almost up to the edge of the toroid. Put the primary through the middle which is a piece of uh, solid tin copper wire with the, uh, the green insulation on it. T2 is very similar, uh, but it's two toroids glued together, so glued them with super glue, as was suggested in the manual. Trying to hold them together at the same time you're putting eight turns on them would be uh, a wee bit fiddly. And I need to redress that diode as well, it's sticking up a wee bit. Then you wind the rest of the inductors, they were no problem at all, except for the, the 29 turns on L7, which is the one with uh, all the wire bundled up on it there. Um, that was quite a squeeze to get all the, the windings on, I had to pull that reasonably tight to get it to, to sit straight. Mounted all the inductors, got them all nice and lined up square I think. No one's going to be able to see in the box afterwards so uh, I won't get too fast. Then we move back on to some uh, discrete componentry this time on the control board. Just the uh, the normal process. Bend the leads, find the hole. Uh, where's the hole? Uh, any hole. Uh, okay, I'll, you know, I'll take that. those holes. Yep. Poke the components in, bend the leads and uh, solder them. Fairly standard uh, process for any kit that you'll come across. Using flush cutters here, the manual recommends flush cutters because you don't want the, uh, the components touching the top of the IC when you plug in the IC and put this board on top. And uh, there was some comment I saw on a blog somewhere saying that was um, a problem so he'd come up with a a different method, trimming the leads first and then soldering them from the top, but uh, I have a pair of flush cutters. We regulator, 78L06 goes in on its back as does Q1, and uh, in that picture we're just missing C20, the LEDs. Um, and the LEDs come with some nice wee spacers, just uh, poke the LED through the spacer, and then insert that into the board and uh, solder and trim, it's quite a nice wee touch. And then once you've got them all soldered in there, you can reheat the leads and uh, give them a wee jiggle to uh, make them all line up straight. You can also see the, the negative wire is also connected there, which goes to the battery. Just soldering in the LED, long lead goes into the round hole. Beautiful. And there's the, uh, the finished controller board with the extra discrete componentry on it. And then at the end of that step there's some more checks you can run, a couple of more tests, uh, just measuring some resistances on the board, pressing the buttons, making sure things work. And again that's a really nice inclusion from, uh, from Allocraft in the process. A lot of uh, kit manuals leave out any basic testing you can do. And they also uh, specify how you can test the LEDs on the board using the diode mode on your multimeter. You can see the red LED lights up there just a wee bit when I'm passing uh, 
forward current through it and uh, gives you the, the drop voltage across the LED. So uh, they're all in and working fine. I didn't manage to short anything out. And assuming you didn't short anything out and it catches fire, you can... Oh, that's a nice click as well. You can uh, put the uh, battery clips into the case because we're moving on to the, uh, the final assembly. The case is really, really nice. There's some, some minor mods you have to do to the plastic, but it's described uh, really well in the manual. Put the IC into the socket. You can see the uh, the earth lug on the uh, the end of the case, just to the left there. That's uh, a stack of a, a screw in the lug and a lock washer and a washer and the nice brass nut that goes on the outside. Just straightening the legs on the IC there, you can see they uh, they need to be straight to get it into the socket. These low profile sockets are quite hard work to uh, get the chip into, and you have to push quite hard. Um, I didn't actually get it seated while I was taking this video, I had to um, give it another bit of a shove after I stopped recording. You can see there the, the pins weren't quite right, um, right down into the, the socket. Now we're putting the, the controller board on, and this is the step where it says you have to get the plastic pair, the top and bottom plastic bits, uh, exactly meeting. You can see a wee bit of the connector still showing there. Um, there was no way of uh, getting them to meet up on my, uh, my kit. Plastic bits weren't going to touch. So now we're uh, almost in the, the final stretch, connecting up the battery wires um, to the, the wee battery connectors, soldering them up, and uh, we also soldered up the earth wire to the, the lug on the earth connector. And that's almost the, I think that was the last soldering actually, those two uh, connections, and um, poke the wires down out of the way, make, it, make sure everything's tidy before you uh, do the final assembly and uh, very much into the home run now so quite a uh, tidy fit the, uh, the circuit board was an excellent fit inside the case as well there's a wee uh, sticky pad you stick um, above the relay so it goes sticky side up and then when you close the case on top of it the, uh, the case sticks to the sticky pad and that stops everything vibrating bit of a glitch in the video there because I, <laughs> I missed a step and I had to go back and uh, I covered my tracks, you understand. So, um, just uh, screwing on the back. <coughs> Excuse me, flip it over. And uh, we really are getting into the uh, the last mile. Here comes the uh, the front panel sticker. So total time uh, to make this, uh, to make the unit was about three hours. Um, and that includes the fact that I was going backwards and forwards a wee bit to take photos and to... Uh, to make the videos to stick this video together for YouTube. So quite a quick project to do uh, in the evening or, or on a free weekend. And uh, you can see the, the brown surface is an anti-static matter I was using and I've got the anti-static strap on my wrist there. Probably only really needed for the, uh, the transistor, the regulator and the IC but always a good idea with kits. Now the big moment, stick the battery in. Nope, there's no smoke, that's a good sign. And the initial test is just to press the uh, the power, and that really was the first time I powered it on. Brave thing to do on video. And then hold the button down and the green LED should flash. So there you have it, one uh, completed T1. And now onto the test video. The, um, the audio for that was recorded while I did the test, so I'll hand over to myself for the testing. OK, here we go, we've got the uh, FT817. Uh, running into a 40-80 meter dipole, so it's a fan dipole, it's resonant on uh, 3.65 and 7.1 meg and we're just going to transmit an AM, oops, it's a bit loud um, we're just going to transmit an AM carrier we'll try on the resonant point or near the resonant point on 80 meters first and just see what happens, so hold down the button found a pretty quick match at least it'll be around 1.1 to 1 pretty happy with that and hmm. hello test, hello test and the wee power meter works as well so I'm transmitting 2.5 watt carrier internal batteries on the 817 let's go to a band where we're not resonant uh, 15 meters that'll be pretty dire I would think JD65 and 15 this morning this afternoon, this evening go somewhere that doesn't appear to be anyone AM mode, push and hold, light comes on, 
and it's found a match. And if I change the meter, if I change the meter on the rig to the uh, SWR, SWR is good. Let's go to another band where it's not resonant just to uh, see how we go. 20 meters should be uh, bottom end of 20 meters. Ah, uh, sorry, 10 meters. So SWR is fine there because it's resonant. Uh, it's multiple. 17 meters, which currently has a radar. Very nice. Switch to AM. It's not indicating any SWR. Let's bypass the tuner. So with the bi tuner bypassed, it's showing uh, 2 to 1, I think that is. I'm not sure what that is on the rig. Now we'll get it to tune. No, we're in bypass. Go bypass. So that was showing over 3 to 1. No longer bypass. Tune. Hmm, not sure what's going on there. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you have to tap. When it says tap, it really does mean tap. <laughs> That's a learning. So we'll uh, now try and tune on uh, 17 meters. All right, now they're showing no SWR on 17 meters. So it does work. Need to uh, obviously read the manual when it says tap. It really is a small tap, and uh, very happy so far. Do a bit more experimentation and uh, if I find any issues I'll post another video. Thanks for watching and uh, by the time I edit all this together it'll be probably quite long. 73s. Don't you just hate that radar? <laughs>